From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empey Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are Drs. Jack and Rexella Van Empey. And welcome to Jack Van Impey Presents. We have so much to share with you today, and I think that, as I was, you're going to be very shocked at the global headlines. First of all, Middle East turmoil will reshape the world. My, oh, my, did you think that would happen? Again, Iran leader says Islam to rule the world. He goes a step farther. And then... Einstein said the atomic age will propel the world toward a great catastrophe. We're going to see if Jack agrees with that. And uh, certainly we have so much to share with you today. Very serious. Ministers gunned down in Pakistan. Now who was this and why? Killing of Christian in second of a blasphemy law critic. It puts in question effectiveness of the United States support for moderates. Now he was a Christian minister. Radicals bringing campaign for Sharia law, Sharia to the White House. Now let me just say this, friends. Remember up front I said that Jack had a deep burden on his heart. And he wants to share with you something that he's going to be pursuing in just the few days ahead. And it's such a burden. Jack, will you explain to us where you're coming from? The Bible says in Ezekiel 3.17, Son of man, I've made you a watchman to warn my people. And Ezekiel 33, 3 says, blow the trumpet and warn my people. Folks, we are in trouble, the greatest trouble we've ever known in the history of the United States of America. And that has to do with the blasphemy law, which is hate speech and Sharia law. First of all, and I'm going to be dealing with this extensively next week, and that's why I want you to get in your phones and tell everyone what next week's program is all about. Blasphemy law favors Islam, not Christianity. They've been trying to pass it in the United Nations since 1999, and they've gained much strength. It's like 79 for 61 against. And what is it? If anyone says a word against Muhammad or against the Quran, he can be put on trial like Wilders is now in Holland, one of the leading politicians who might go to jail for 12 months or even be put to death. It's vicious stuff. But you can't say anything against them, but they can say everything against our Christ, the prophet Jesus of Islam. And next week I will spare nothing. I will pay any price to get the truth out. God has called me for this hour to be the prophetic voice. And I'll tell you, you need to hear what begins the series of messages next week. And then there is Sharia law. And just this very day when I'm sitting in this desk, three came from Britain to plead for it and to fight for it at the White House. And that goes much further. For instance, it's honor killing. If your daughter has sex, even if she's raped, the father the brother or the first cousin must put her to death. It's happened 10 times in Canada. It's beginning to happen in America. It happens all around the world. God help us. Next week, you'll see why we are so concerned. And you know, the Bible says this, no, also the last day, perilous, troublesome times shall come. Second Timothy 3, 1, but in verse 4, they're laughing. It's a mile a minute. Charlie Sheen. Oh. And then there's Jay Leno and all the rest of them. We're not concerned because we love pleasure more than we love God. Second Timothy 
three, four. You know, those people are coming to Washington there, Jack, because they say that the Sharia law would solve all the American problems. They were going to have a rally in front of the White House. That's solve when the all. problems will begin. All right, Jack, now the battle. Whoa. Of 2012 budget oh, is going on in Washington right now, as you very well know, and we're all so very concerned about that. Where will it lead? Debt swells while Washington cowers and the president's reckless budget and the Republicans' mere fiscal tree trimming should make it clear to the American people that our political leaders have neither the guts nor the will to make tough choices. Now, I am quoting Cal Thomas on that one. He says that our politicians don't have the guts to make the right choices. And, uh, you know, Jack, I would uh, ask you that and also follow it up by saying, do the ministers have the fortitude to get up into their pulpits and share with the people where we are right now? Rexel, I just had a birthday and thousands of cards came in over and over again. The people said, Jack, thank you for taking a stand, for speaking up, for willing to pay a price if you have to in the future. And I'll tell you, I'm going to do it as long as God lets me live. And I have to do it only when I get the anointing of the Holy Spirit on me, for that's when one gets power. Yes, you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you, Acts 1.8. And in Acts 13, verse 9, where Paul was filled with the Holy Spirit, there was a person in the crowd called Elamus the sorcerer, and he's trying to turn people against the message of Paul. And Paul looks him in the face and says, You child of the devil, you enemy of all righteousness, how long will you cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? These men spoke up. You know, I'd hate to be a little one horse, half carrot, knock kneed, thin spin, goose pimple, deacon fearing, woman pleasing preacher. I got a message to preach. And folks, I'm telling you, as my sponsors out there, I'm going to give it everything I have till God calls me home. I'm getting letters from all over, and they're saying, keep it up. One called me the Energizer Bunny, and another <laughs> said, sing them, Jack, amen. <laughs> I probably had hundreds of recent cards saying, tell it like it is. The others won't. Speak up, Brother Van Ape. God, keep you here as long as possible so that we can hear the truth. And what's wrong with you preachers? 2 Timothy 4, verses 2 to 4, preach the word. Be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But they shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall be turned from the faith and from the truth to myths. And that's what some of you guys are preaching on Sunday morning. You're preterists. All the signs were filled by 70 A.D. You say as replacement theologists, oh, uh, Israel is now the church and Jerusalem is now heaven. Myths, baloney. And I'll tell you, we need to get into the word and start preaching the truth. And I'm going to take on all these folks. Not only am I going to take on the Muslims, then I'm going to take on the Christians because there are so many apostates in our pulpits, men who are mocking the Bible, mocking Christ, mocking heaven and hell, and 50% of the evangelicals saying, oh, there are many ways to heaven. You say that, including the president, and you are not a Christian. Nobody can say that Christ deceived the people. Of all the texts he mentioned about himself being the only way. For instance, in John 8, 24, he said, You die in your sins if you don't believe I'm he, the way, the truth, and the life, John 14, 6. And I'll tell you, there's just too many of these mealy mouth jellyfish, spineless ministers who don't have enough backbone to take a chiropractic adjustment, uh, spewing all these things. Listen, Jesus is coming soon. Every single sign is here. There are Something like 1,000 signs, 500 to be fulfilled before Christ returns to earth. They're all here. And then another 500 once he arrives with us. That's what's going to happen. The rapture is next. And that is 1 Thessalonians 4, 16. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. You're going to hear some startling things today, but there's comfort in the message of Christ's return. We're going to try to bring you that comfort. 
Oh, Jack, you know it is a comfort, isn't it? And it's wonderful to know that we don't have to be afraid of what's happening around us because the Bible promises that a Christian's going to escape it, right, Jack? Oh, Luke 21, 36, Jesus said, Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass on the earth. And then again in Revelation 3.10, I will keep you from out of the hour of temptation and testing, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell on the face of the earth. We're not going to be here, so rejoice. And you know, you preachers who won't preach it, God forgive you, God help you, 10,385 verses that I've quoted about Christ's return, one out of every four in the Bible, you'll never give a message on it, it's the only hope we have. What is wrong? Here's where you stand, 2 Peter 3, 3, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last day scoffers walking after their own lusts, saying, where is the promise of his coming? Since our fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were. He's coming. And I found out that it's people that are not living for God who are always saying, oh, it won't happen in my day. It'll be another hundred years. Uh, no one knows the day and the hour. You are the lexadaisical Laodicean Christians of Revelation 3, 15. I know your works. You're neither cold nor hot. I would you were cold or hot. So then because you're lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I'll spew you out of my mouth. And that's the Greek word emio, a polite word for vomit. God says, you make me that sick. Let's start looking for the coming hope, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God, our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, you know what? That's a temptation, isn't it? With everything bad going on in the world, we have a temptation to bury our head in the sand, like I've said often, and run away, Jack. Oh, we've got something better. We're going to fly away. The rapture in Revelation 4, 1, when he says, come up hither, and we've go through 187 trillion billions of miles and 11 one hundredths of a second. What a trip, what a ride it's going to be. Now, Rexella, terrible times are ahead. Jesus said in Luke 21, 25, nations will be in distress with perplexity and mass confusion. Look at the uproar in the Middle East now. People just don't know where to turn, what to do. They're fleeing to other nations for life. But there's more. Here's what's coming. Jeremiah 30, verse 7, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. Daniel 12, one, There shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation. This is that tribulation period of Revelation chapter 6 to 18. Jesus said in Matthew 24, 21, For then shall be great tribulation such as never was since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be again. And it's called the great tribulation in Revelation 7, verse 14. But as I said earlier, we're going to be gone. Now, I am a pre-tribulationist, and therefore I believe we'll be evacuated, taken out before chapter 6 to 18 of Revelation through the come up hither of Revelation 4, verse 1. Now, if one believes he's going through it, he's a post-tribulationist. I'm such a pre-tribulationist, I refuse to eat post-toasties. <laughs> How do you like that? We had a neighbor, a yeah. minister, who believed he was going through it. And one day he came to my house excitedly saying, look at the headlines, Jesus is coming soon. And I said, yeah, I'm going to leave here seven years before you do. I said, do you take care of my car while I'm gone? <laughs> hey, we're going and soon. <laughs> oh, yes, that's good news, isn't it? Oh, yes, thank the Lord so much. Uh, he spoke about the Middle East just a moment ago. We're going to be giving you some headlines, very, very pertinent to our time, what's going on in the Middle East. All right, friends, let, I mentioned we'll be going on to the Middle East. Why? It's so very, very important. And uh, it certainly focuses on what will happen in the future and where we'll be going in this world very, very soon. All right, this cover means a lot. A new era, how Middle East turmoil will reshape the world. Iran leader Islam to rule the world. And there you see the anti-American, and that, of course, is President Shabazz of Venezuela. And take a look at this next when Shabazz meets Ahmadinejad in Tehran. Going on, and this is what he had to say to him. We know that they will never be able to restrict the Islamic Revolution in whatever way. We will always stand together. We will not only resist, 
we will also stand victorious beside one another. And certainly they are buddies. Ahmadinejad, Iran, and Syria will create a new world order. Man, you've heard Jack Benipi speak of that. Ahmadinejad stresses Iran, China's role in establishing new world order. Take a look at that one. And growing ties between Turkey, China, Iran, worry Israel, and the United States. U.S. warns of North Korea provocation within months. Whoa. And Russia tests two intercontinental missiles. I wonder why. Russia lauds nuclear pact, but reserves right to withdraw. Now, I drew your attention to that New World Order. Is that what they're trying to do? Jack has spoken about the New World Order so very, very much. Ahmadinejad, is he trying to do that, Jack? Oh, it's unbelievable. And listen, he says that Shavaz is with him. And it's to establish the flag of Islam over all the nations of the world. That's what Khomeini, who is the chief minister to Ahmadinejad, says we're going to try to do. And even if millions of our people die through atomic warfare, it's worth it if our flag flies over every country in the face of the earth. It's coming. Now, this new world order, he says we're making plans with Syria. And that, of course, is Isaiah 17, 1. And it's Ahmadinejad, who's found in Ezekiel 38, 5 as Persia. And they changed their name in 1932 to Iran. He also says we are working to get China with us. Revelation 16, 12. They're all going to go together for the big Armageddon battle, the second phase when China moves in, there is Ahmadinejad in Iran and Syria and all of these various nations that are breaking up right now. You know why all these nations are beginning to fail? Because the dictator of the new world order is coming and you can't have many dictators here at the time. So they are being eliminated right now. Now that would not be true of the kings because when Christ returns to earth, he is the king of the kings and lord of the lord. So it's only dictatorships and it is moving rapidly. As you see one after one and thousands dying in many of the nations right at this moment because of it. And you see not only that, but there is Turkey. That's Ezekiel 38, 7, Tagarma, who also is in for the New World Order. Now, there are probably going to be a couple groups working on this New World Order. I have the message out, and it's the Roman Empire. But the Lord showed me something unbelievable this week. Daniel 2, verses 41 and 42 mentions the ten toes, but it doesn't really go into explanations. Now, when you read Daniel 7, verses 7, 8, 20, 24, Revelation 12, 3, Revelation 13, 1, and Revelation 17, 3, 7, 12, and 16, all of those talk about, get it now, the ten horns, seven heads and ten horns. Wow, what the Lord showed me. Oh, this is exciting and amazing. You've heard me talk in the past about the image that was in Nebuchadnezzar's dream, the king of Babylon, Daniel 1.1. And he describes the seven world empires to come through the various metals of this image. And when you get to the sixth empire, it's Rome. But wait a minute, there were two legs, and I missed this for years. The one had to do with Rome today when it's revived, and the other had to do with Constantinople. That's Turkey. That's the Muslim world. And so we see them all pushing now for a new world order. Why? They're all going to be one anyway when the Antichrist comes to power because he devours the whole world, Daniel 7, 23, and has power over all kindreds, tongues, people, and nations in Revelation 13, verse 7. But what really shocks me, Excel is he is called the eighth one as he takes over all these empires and he is a product of the previous seven. They're all within him, all the traits of all the nationalities. And so now I can see how we can come together and why Ahmadinejad is promoting it and why they're getting rid of the dictators because you can only have one dictator and that is the one called the Antichrist, the leader of the New World Order and the final thing I want you to see is that when he comes to power, there are kings still on earth for Christ when he returns after that 
power is destroyed when he comes, Revelation 11, 15, then he rules over the kings of the earth. He's the king of kings and the Lord of lords, Revelation 19, 16. It's here. Ooh, Jack, that's so interesting, isn't it? Enough to say they're trying to form the new world order. Can you see it? Trying to form the new world order. Look at what uh, Neapolitano has to say. U.S. faces terror threat from within, from within. Al-Qaeda to unleash Western jihads. And then bin Laden's goal, kill four million Americans. And Pakistan doubles nuclear arsenal. And then again, nuclear security summit hears of terror risks. Perez, nuclear terror is the world's greatest threat. And Israel Defense Forces Chief of Staff says this, Iran nuclear threat rising. Well, we all recognize this wonderful scientist, the greatest of all time, Einstein. He is the icon for all time. And look at what he has to say, the atomic age will propel the world toward an unequaled catastrophe. Unequal to catastrophe, that is pretty big. And I know you have this question. Do you agree with him, Jack? Oh, 100%, Rick Salmon. We haven't mentioned that, of course, the entire Arab world will go with Russia and China for the invasion of Israel. And it's pictured in Joel 2, verse 3, and Russia's marching down and a fire devours before them. And as they're pushed back to Siberia in verse 20, the prophet in verse 30 sees blood, fire, pillars of smoke. We just mentioned what happens when Russia makes the move. Then the second wave is when China comes in Revelation 16, 12. It's the greatest war in history, Revelation 9, verses 14 to 18. And when they come, it says a third part of the trees was burned. All green grass was burned, Revelation 8, 7. And by these three was a third part of men killed of the fire, smoke, and brimstone. Nuclear war, Einstein was right. But one thing, it's because of terrorism. And that's Matthew 24, 37, where Jesus predicted. Luke 21, 9, he says, when you hear of wars and commotions, wars and terrorism, wars and revolutionaries, be not afraid. These things must come before what? When it's happening, then shall they see the Son of Man, Jesus, coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Come quickly, Lord Jesus, to end it all. That's the story. Oh, my, what a blessing that is to know the Lord is coming back. But is it a blessing for you if the Lord does come at any moment? Are you ready? Is your life ready for the coming of the Lord? Things in there you don't want there? Oh, Jack, show us all how to be ready for the coming. You can have peace because you know you can escape it all when you hear the words come up here, the rapture. Look at me, get ready. Lord Jesus, there is no other way except your way. You came and took blood in a body because the blood cleanses from all sin. And you did it for me. Lord Jesus, thank you. Today I ask you, come into my heart. Be my savior. I ask this in your beautiful holy name. Amen. Amen. Isn't it good? The blood of Jesus cleanses from all sin. Good to be forgiven and good to start over with him walking with us. If you made that decision, prayed that prayer, there is my address. Please write to me. I'll send you absolutely free this little book of first steps in a new direction. And now our offer of the week. And I'll tell you, it's so important that you have it. Here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive it. Chuck. Thank you, Rexella. Oh, my friend to order. Have your credit card ready and call toll free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JBI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation to Jack Van Empey Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation to Jack Van Empey Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now, once again, here's Rexella. Oh, friends, our time goes so very, very quickly, but I do want to leave you with a very good thought. Three directions to which we can look. Backward, 
we're going to get discouraged. Outward, we're going to be disheartened. And upward, we'll be delighted. Keep looking up and trusting in the Lord. And we're going to be happy to be in your home again next week, the Lord willing. And until then, do remember, God cares for you. And so do we so very, very much. God bless you. Bye-bye.